inverted that is pointing to the ground meanwhile the imperial state crown the orb and the scepter the symbols with which the queen was crowned in 1952 and which she wore every year for the state Hackney of parliament two members of the royal company of archers the king's bodyguard of scotland about to be relieved at the end of their watch each relief takes their position beside those they are about to relieve on this watch And uniquely on this occasion, the officers of the guards are remaining at the lower level. This will leave room for the Queen's eight grandchildren to take their position shortly. Major Brigadier James Fraser, who has given that instruction, officer of the Royal Company of Archers, setting off indoors. And the scene is set for a historic occasion when, for the first time, the grandchildren of a sovereign will keep a watch of this vigil. The Prince of Wales will be joined by his brother, the Duke of Sussex. Peter Phillips, the son of the Princess Royal, will be joined by his sister, Zara Tyndall. The Duke of York's daughters, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie of York, will play their part and the Earl and Countess of Wessex and Forfers, children, the Lady Louise Mountbatten-Windsor and Viscount Seven. The eldest of them, Peter Phillips, is 44, and the youngest, Viscount Seven, 14. So there's 30 years between the oldest and the youngest. And at the moment, they are getting ready and preparing for this public duty and performance of vigil. Anyone who's reached the top of those steps and looked into this extraordinary hall with its dimensions of 73 meters by 20 meters across cannot help to be struck by both the splendor and simplicity of the lying in state. The state colour of the Queen's Company, Grenadier Guards, has been again pulled to one side so that members of the late Queen's grandchildren may stand in the many points around this very sad scene.
Every face in the public passing by has their story of a journey here. Conversations in the queue with strangers who've got their only reason to come and pay respect to this late queen. And fed in all the time, less able people, often with the help of the first aid nursing yeomanry, who meet people who are no longer as able as they once might have been, to filter in and also pay their respects. gathering to watch members of the royal households and also the Earl and Countess of Wessex and Forfa. Their two children are the youngest of the eight grandchildren of Elizabeth II. The candles flickering is caught in the jewels of the imperial state crown, including the great blue sapphire known as the Stuart Sapphire at the rear of the central band of this crown. And the pearl earrings that hang from the center. Said to have been worn by Mary, Queen of Scots. As we wait for the Queen's grandchildren to come, perhaps we might contemplate what an undertaking this is for all of them, but understand how much they would all have wanted to do it. But this is a very public place, and grief is a very private thing. The swan's feathers of the Honourable Corps of Gentlemen at Arms. A bodyguard formed by King Henry VIII. The Queen's grandchildren will now enter the scene. The late Queen to be respected by all eight of them. led by the Prince of Wales. Followed by his brother, the Duke of Sussex, both wearing the uniform of the Blues and Royals. Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie of York following.
Lady Louise Windsor and Viscount Seven. And last of all, the children of the Princess Royal, Peter Phillips the eldest at 44, and Zara Tyndall. This is a family that must always carry its grief in public. And on this occasion, each of them carries that grief privately in this most public of places in the United Kingdom. as they step towards their grandmother with all the memories they carry. This great hall will enfold them as they make their salute. They turn and lower their heads.
from the splendor and glory of the crown their grandmother wore. The power of the position. The glory around this catafalque. She held this great office for more than seven decades. But for these eight people, they knew her only as Granny. watched by the Earl and Countess of Wessex and Forfa, Aquarius, members of the household, and friends. Pride parents, in this case, particularly the youngest of those who did vigil for his grandmother, Viscount Seven, at the age of 14. But this crown has been honored by the grandchildren who played their part. And again, this scene restores itself to what we have come to know over the last few days as the vigil continues by the bodyguards and by the officers of the household division. Members of the royal family watching, particularly a proud mother and father of the youngest two, now also move on as so many others who have been waiting to watch this moment and have their time with the Queen will return to the process of passing by and making their salute. Alistair Bruce there bringing us the commentary for the vigil of the grandchildren. And of course, this is a family very used to wearing its grief in public. And we saw that, didn't we, with the eight grandchildren who made the journey to Westminster Hall to stand guard at the Queen's coffin, carrying out that very private moment of grief, still under the gaze of the public, both those in Westminster Hall who we can see on our screens now, and of course, many, many more through their television screens and elsewhere. And they will, of course, be feeling that very personal grief. We saw that in a letter from Princess Beatrice and Eugenie talking about their dearest granny with memories of picking raspberries and having tea. And now, of course, the Queen continues to lie in state as members of the public try to carve out a personal moment with her after waiting for all of those hours in the famous queue outside. Earlier today, King Charles and Prince William uh, met uh, members of the public uh, who were waiting to enter Westminster Hall today, where, of course, we had been looking at those pictures. They shook hands with mourners, and then the King thanked those uh, in the queue for taking the time to wait, with some people waiting up to 15 hours to pay their respects early this morning. It's also been another busy day of engagements for the new monarch, who was also briefed by police chiefs on security preparations for the Queen's state funeral, which will be on Monday. Sky's Tom Clark reports. For the new king, it's hardly a tough crowd. These people chose to queue through a chilly night to pay their respects to his mother. But his schedule is definitely gruelling. He's toured the four countries of his kingdom and last night stood vigil for his mother before today visiting the police and emergency services to be briefed on plans for the Queen's funeral on Monday. Well, I can't tell you for the money for everything you to do is fantastic. Thank you. 
It was on his way back to the palace that the king, accompanied by the Prince of Wales, made an unannounced stop at the queue. When they joined the line at half past one this morning, could any of these exhausted queuers have imagined they'd get a chance to meet their equally exhausted king? The king spent more than 20 minutes greeting mourners, few of whom could believe their long and winding path to see the late monarch would lead them to the new one as well. I kissed his hand. I asked him if I could kiss his hand and he said, certainly. The king then returned to more formal matters, greeting the governors general of the 15 realms and later their prime ministers. These are the first of many handshakes. Over the weekend, more leaders from around the world will arrive to pay their final...